Hello, hello, hello. This is attorney Mike Gravelin coming to you from Chicago. As usual, I've got all sorts of good stuff. I can't remember all what's all in there. Natalie's partly to blame, of course. Kristen and Marion Harmon. The usual suspects have hooked us up yet again. Let's do this, shall we? I have one simple request. And that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Boy, I'm just getting railroaded here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, this is ticket 23, RO04073. The ticket was issued on the 17th of June about... Uh, 10 to 10 in the evening in the area of Royal Oak near Woodward and 12 Mile Road, and you were cited for impeding traffic. You were cited for impeding instead of the reason for the traffic stop, which was driving at 10 o'clock with no lights. Are you, are you here to accept the break, which doesn't carry points, or to reject it? Ma'am? To reject it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I want to make sure that you understand that in the event the hearing discloses that you didn't impede traffic but that you were operating without headlights, the ticket can be amended to that, and that could carry points. Do you still want to reject the impeding citation? What would be the citation? Well, I'm reading the same ticket that you are, and the ticket reads, vehicle drove multiple miles without any lights. The ticket was issued at 10 to 10 in the evening. Yes, but the history that it was happening, it, it had a lot of lights around. But and the, This uh, isn't the, <laughs> we haven't started the hearing yet, ma'am. Are, are you accepting the break of impeding or rejecting it? So you said if uh, the result of the court be that uh, this has been a correct um, issue, the it would be, be cited? This is a civil matter. It's not a criminal matter. The ticket can be amended to conform to the proofs. I haven't heard the proofs. I don't know what happened. You were there. <laughs> the officer was there. I wasn't. So I can't tell you what's going to happen after the hearing because I don't know what the proofs are. Yeah, but you said that the ticket would be, um, so the, there would be some uh, points on my I did not say the ticket license. would be amended to something carried points. I said the ticket possibly could be amended. I know. It's frustrating. Don't worry. It gets worse. I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell you it's going to be amended because I haven't heard, I have not heard the proofs. Okay. So what do you want to do? Do you want to have a hearing on this? Or yes. do you want to explain what happened? Do you want to admit responsibility for impeding and explain what happened? Or do you want to hear it? Um, I want to hear it. Okay. If you'd raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth? I do, Your Honor. Yeah, you're on. The officer will testify first, please. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, at the date and time listed on the citation, uh, I was driving southbound on Woodward. Um, so was the defendant. Uh, she was driving she her vehicle. The deal. Uh, I do not have the cita or the citation in front of me. I am not sure uh, at, you know of the vehicle, but but it is on the citation. It was the correct vehicle. Um, it was you know past 10, 10 p.m. that evening. Uh, on a listed date, and um, the the vehicle did not have its lights on. Uh, yes, Woodward does have you know lights on the road, but uh, you know when you're operating a vehicle, I, I do believe you you still need to have your lights on. Uh, I had issues seeing the vehicle, um, and you know I was I was concerned that it could have caused an accident. Thank you, Ms. Oyatina. I'm sorry, I know I killed your name. What's the correct way to pronounce your no, name? No, you're good. It's Hojatinia. Hojatinia. Yes. 
to thank you. Now that I hear it, it's not as close enough for a gringo. Complicated as it looks. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's your turn, please. Yeah, that night, um, me and my sister, we were um, at the mall and we were going to back home um, to Vertroy. Um, so Vertroy is where we live. So we were heading there. And at the time, it was a little past nine um, when the mall closed and everywhere was still lit up. And that day, um, the sunset was 9.30. And it takes um, at least half an hour in order to get dark. Um, so we were on the highways going home, but um, and we were in the middle of the way that we decided to go to Royal or downtown to eat dinner. And um, so my sister is, changed the direction of GPS the to uh, downtown Royal or when we were going to eat. And uh, the GPS changed the direction to go toward Woodward. So before that, we were, so it was still so lit up out there. And by the time that we got on Woodward, um, the lights from the street and from the other cars, they were all around. And I couldn't feel at all the change in um, the. Blinded by the lights. There's, it, the lighting was so darn good, I didn't notice the sun had gone down. So it, it was not dark at all to understand that something is different from a few minutes ago. And um, another thing regarding my vehicle was that it is an auto um, uh, for changing the light. Um, and you. I don't understand how that happened, but uh, because of um, it being on that, and it's been like, more than two years uh, that I was driving that car, it never happened. Should we hook her up with her gear? Happened that it changes, and um, I didn't expect it at all to be something that I noticed that okay, uh, it's getting um, later at night, and I should change it to that. Um, so I expected it to be auto, and I was um, on Woodward, a lot of lights. Um, from the street lights from the other car, so it was not noticeable. Um, the ticket was issued at uh, 9.50 p.m., and it was some minutes before that that I saw the police at my back, and I turned for, um, like, uh, I pulled over. So it was still lit up out there. Yes, by the time that I got the ticket and I got out of that place, it was dark, but before that, there was still light. And Seriously, we want to hear about, about the hall at the mall. <laughs> um, I don't think it would be any um, uh, any threat to any car around me, considering all the lights that were out there. Does it not occur to you that the street lights were on and all the other drivers around you, according to your testimony, had their headlights on? If everybody else had their headlights on, the street lights have gone on that would indicate i think fairly clearly that it was the judge is just incredulous you you, you see the problem with your defense don't you the, the fact that everyone had their lights on is a good indicator that it's time to turn your lights on Start. yes but it was not clear because there were a lot of other lights it was not appearing that's my that point there is yes that's my but, point ma'am all but the other drivers were around around. turned on their headlights. They didn't turn them on for the heck of it. They turned them on because it was getting dark. You testified so, that all the other cars around you had their headlights on and the street lights were on. Therefore, you didn't notice that it had gotten darker. Yes, so it was after sunset. That's what I'm saying. And yeah, it was, it was, well it, it was going to get dark, but it was still not all the way dark. The statute requires you to turn on your lights. You didn't. Is there a motion to amend, office? Um. No, Your Honor. I, I like to, to keep it impeding. Okay, I'm going to treat this as a lesser included and find the driver responsible. He wanted to bang her with the uh, points violation. <laughs> I don't blame him after listening to this. <laughs> uh. and the officer is continuing to give you the break so you don't get points. Yeah, he's cool. 
if the ticket were to be amended to conform to your testimony, you'd be found responsible and get points. The fine is $175, but you knew that before. It can be paid at the counter in the courthouse. You can mail in a check or money order, or you can pay it online. All right, I said this earlier on, on Biggin's stream, and I'm going to say it here. If Biggin doesn't get to 25 by the end of the week, I'm putting the whole chat over my knee. That That's the way it is. Have a good day. There's no points. Thank you. You have a good day. Ah! We will now be on the record in 2020, TR551, State of Kansas versus Braxton Ross Broyles. Jared Regeer for the state. Uh, I'm, Mr. Mr. Broyles appears in person and pro se. Do you speak of uh, Mr. Regeer? And there he is. Is your bondsman here? This was set for a motion for judgment on bond. Looks like you failed to appear. You pled not guilty September 14th. The last case was Michigan, yes. And well, this goes back to February 5th of 2021, Mr. Broyles. And uh, yes. it looks like you were given a 1500 cash or surety bond May 11th of 22. You told me on May 18th of 22, you were applying for diversion, but on July 12th, 2022, the County Attorney's Diversion Coordinator said you had never done that. You came in the next day on the 13th, continued your not guilty plea, and continued to say you were applying for diversion, but you were told that was the last time that diversion would be offered by the County Attorney. September 13th, the Diversion Coordinator said you'd never applied. So September 14th, you continued your not guilty plea, and still asked for additional time for diversion. And it was continued, surprisingly again, to November 14th of 2022, but you failed to appear and you still hadn't applied for diversion. And you were issued a bench warrant with a no bond hold. You were next seen by the court, looks like Judge Satterfield, January 6th of 2023. And uh, you were commenting that you'd still never heard back from the state regarding your diversion. Of course, they said I'd, uh, you hadn't applied. So you were going, you told the court that you were going to retain an attorney. Look how much you were talking uh, about. I it. asked the judge. He's just loving it. Sorry. Just a moment. <laughs> uh, the court directed you to retain counsel, but if you didn't have counsel by your next hearing, you are to inquire of Judge Webster, so you're seeing Judge Hart, and that you are to be at the Sally Port for all future hearings. And your bond was set at a thousand cash or surety. So let's knock that out. You're not at the Sally Port, are you, Mr. Boyles? Uh, no, I got a link on my on my email to do it in, on Zoom. Okay. Well, in January, Judge Hart told you all future hearings had to be in person at the courthouse. And then March 20th, you failed to appear again after you'd seen Judge Hart. Your bond went up to 2000 cash or surety. And then you were picked up and saw, I'm not sure which judge you saw, maybe me, July 7th. No, I should take that back. You weren't in court that day. You emailed asking if there was something you could do to take care of the case because you had the opportunity to move to Florida and that you kept trying to submit an appointment card explaining why you missed your very first court date, but it was not legible. He decided to move up in his career and become Florida man. And you were told that in order to resolve this case, you could call Lori at the sheriff's office, I believe that is. So... We are here today on a motion for judgment on bond. You apparently got notice that your bond was going to be revoked today, and you somehow managed to get a link and show up, even though you were by Zoom, even though you were told by Judge Hart to appear at the Sally Court for all future hearings. Would you agree with all that? 
Um, ma'am, I was told uh, the one that I sent the picture in for, I was told that I was supposed to appear in Sallyport for that one, and then it would be up to the discretion of you after that. I was told that in court. Um, Who told you that? Because that's not what Judge Hart's notes say. Uh, it, it was the judge that I saw whenever I got picked up, and then I had to rebond. That's that's what I was told that it would be up to the discretion of you after that. And then I showed up and uh, it's very, very difficult for me to get out there. It's. I've, are you in Florida? No, ma'am. Where are you? I live in Wichita. <laughs> I have this. I have an opportunity to move to Florida. I, I don't know the relative geography, but I mean, it's in Kansas, right? It, you know, I, and it's not like the, the edge, so it, it can't be too far. I to pursue an actual career other than working at restaurants and okay. take care of my, or help take care of my grandpa and grandma down there. So I, I honestly, ma'am, I'm, I was wondering if we can do any sort of just some kind of fines that I can pay so I can get through this because I cannot leave the state with any legal obligations here. Okay, Mr. Boyles, first of all, you have not seen a judge since you saw Judge Hart on January 6th, 2023. Yes, and his notes are very clear that you were told to appear at the Sally Board for all, ALL, all future hearings. And you didn't come back to. Who doesn't want to go hang out with the Sally Port boys? I, 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 I want a speeding ticket just, just for the excuse court after that so you couldn't have seen me and i couldn't have given you nobody could have given you discretion not to appear at the sally court because you haven't seen a judge since then. um i attempted to um, come in you haven't seen a judge though that's the bottom line you said the judge told you that you, there was discretion on all that and that's just not possible sir and, I, and i'm not going to debate that you should be here at the sally board for judge hart's orders Secondly, this is a motion for judgment on bonds, so there should be an active warrant out for your arrest that you need to surrender yourself to. Are you aware of that? Um, yes, ma'am. I, I am you now aware of that. But you knew it before, too, didn't you? By the way, I did not clickbait you. Planet Fitness is featured later in this video. When you failed to appear the last time? I, I attempted to appear. Though I was given the wrong date on the card, and I even sent two different photos in. What and, date did your card say? Um, I believe it said the 22nd, ma'am. Of what month? Of, uh, I don't have the card anymore. Um, it was, they, I came in and they said, oh, my court date was supposed to be on the 20th. And then I went home and I took a picture of the card and sent it in. And they said they couldn't read it, but the picture I sent in, I could, I, I, I could clearly see the day on there. Well, apparently you didn't come to court the day on your that you said was on your card. Because they, they said, oh, well, I don't have court that day. I, I apparently missed it. So when I apparently missed it and I sent them that in, I didn't get a response for a couple of days. So you took yourself to court with an active warrant and nobody arrested you on it? I walked into Sally Port, ma'am. I walked into the... The and the, deputies, and the deputies at the Sally Port just told you, oh, you missed your court, go on home? No, I said uh, on my card, it said the 22nd, and they told me to go get the card. And okay. I took so a picture of it. So they let you walk off with an active warrant. Thank you, Colin. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. Well, Mr. Regeer, what do you want to do about the reason we're here today? And that's motion for judgment on bonds. Well, Your Honor, if, if the defendant, I think the defendant may have um, referred to um, the possibility of um, to use once to, if the court is finding that he has waived his right to counsel and, he, and the defendant wants to enter a plea, certainly I'm prepared to make any recommendations on that. Um, as far as the motion for judgment on bond is concerned, um, I think the state would um, move to withdraw that at this point. However, um, in review of the file, it looks like uh, the um, when the defendant failed to appear at the March 20th hearing, the court had entered certain orders regarding a bond. I think the court has already heard to that to some extent. 
I'm not showing any uh, more recent appearance bonds since the bond that had the appearance of the March 20 date. So are you moving to set aside the warrant as well? Well, Your Honor, uh, the court has already ordered that warrant, so far from me to um, make any motions along that point. At this point, the state would only move to withdraw the motion for judgment on bond. So you're basically suggesting... Point, Your Honor, the, um, I would probably um, refer, respectfully defer to the court on that. At this point, the state's only motion is to withdraw the motion for judgment on bond filed with the uh, court. Okay. I think I understand what you're saying. Mr. Broyles, what do you plan to do to resolve this matter? Um, they have so many other reasons, but but the, they, they've never cited that one. Are you still <laughs> wanting an attorney? Are you still going to hire an attorney? Uh, I I asked for a corner appointed with, uh, it wasn't with you, ma'am. It was with uh, the other judge. I cannot remember his name. Judge Hart? Uh, Oh, yeah, Judge I Sanders. Asked corner it's like you had Judge Sanders. I said hard a while ago. I mean, it, it was Sanders. Okay. Uh, he said that that would be up to you for a corner appointed attorney because I cannot afford one. So if I, I mean, if I could get uh, files to file for a corner appointed attorney, then I would love to do that. Um, but like I said earlier, if I can just be charged with some, or not charged, I'm sorry, if I could just pay a certain amount of fines and, and just get this all taken care of just so I can <clears throat> move on to the next chapter of my life pretty much, that's, re that's really all I'm trying to do. I got Judge, he's just trying to get to the Florida man chapter. Why do you keep getting in his way? I got this ticket when I was 17 years old. I'm 21 now. That's almost four years. I'm almost 22. I want to get every, all my legal obligations dealt with so I can proceed to move down to Florida and pursue a better career. And so that's why I'm asking for like maybe some kind of fines or something like that, something that I could pay off. Well, I can't tell you what, what your sentence would be. We need to kind of approach this in a systematic manner. The first issue is, do you want an attorney or do you not? And can you afford an attorney if you cannot? Do you want? Okay, right now, uh, Regeer can interject and say the state will offer something if he just pays this fine and we'll be done with it. And that would probably resolve it. He knows it, <laughs> but he doesn't care. He likes to watch the guy squirm. <laughs> you apply for an attorney, or do you want to waive your right to counsel and represent yourself? I'd like to apply for a court appointed attorney, please. All right. And are you employed? Uh, yes, ma'am. Where do you work? Bourbon Street. It's a bar and grill. Is that in Wichita? Yes, ma'am. And are you working full time? Uh, 40 hours I'm a week? I'm attempting to. Are they giving you 40 hours a week at least? No, ma'am. I can only get uh, around 35. And 35? that's what's stretching it. Okay. And then what do they pay, pay you per month? I, I get paid hourly, I get paid twelve dollars an hour. But what's your monthly pay? Twelve hundred dollars, something like that. And then do you get tips on top of that? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. And do you pay any kind of rent or mortgage? Um yes, I pay rent and taxes on my house. All right, so so you own your home? I, I own the trailer, but I rent a lot. I see. I see. And are you married or single? Single, ma'am. Okay. I will appoint. A I see. You had me at trailer. <laughs> That's what she was thinking, but she didn't say. Attorney Darren Patterson. Can you write down his name? You got a pencil and paper? Um, uh, let me go to my notes real quick. Okay. Everyone always have pencil and paper ready when your name is called in court? All right. You said Gary Patterson? No, Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, oh. Patterson. Oh, sir, you're perfect for the Darren Patterson plan. His number is 316-322-7700. You, you know, Darren Patterson's uh, lobby is just the uh, Island of Misfit toys. 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's an absolute circus in there. <laughs> zero, zero. Please call his office and give him your contact information as soon as you leave this hearing. And right. your next court date will be Monday, October 16th at 9. Ashley, that is, or Savannah, that is Monday, isn't it? The 16th? Yes, yes, Your Honor. So tell Mr. Patterson your court date is October 16th. I'm going to have you come at 8 instead of 9, Mr. Broyles. Okay. Now, the, you've got your attorney, you've got your court date. And state has set aside its motion for judgment on bond. So it looks like that will reinstate your $1,000 cash or surety if you can make sure your bondsman will be on, continued on that and that will withdraw your warrant that is active for your failure to appear. But Mr. Broyles, don't leave the state of Kansas until you get this result. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's, the whole, that's the whole plan. Okay. All right. Anything else, Mr. Boyles, that we need to talk about before I let you go? Um, no, that's it. All right. Mr. Regeer, anything else we need to talk about? Um, more of a point of clarification, Your Honor. Um, am I correct in understanding the court's order that the defendant is not to leave the state of Kansas as a condition of the reinstated bond? That is correct. Oh, Regeer, you know damn well he's not supposed to leave the state. You just wanted to hear yourself say it, which is why we love you. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> if there's nothing further, Mr. Broyles, you are excused at this time, but call attorney. Okay. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Ah! Is your name Kai Sotomayor? Yes, it is. This is... Here we go, people. This is... Uh... This is the Planet Fitness incident, as it came to be known. It's 23 ro zero forty one ninety two. By the way, I saw you in the chat. I've got nothing against Planet Fitness. I've never been to a Planet Fitness. I've just seen funny videos about Planet Fitness, and there seems to be a real proclivity uh, of the defendants to be at Planet Fitness. <laughs> I, I, really, I really have had no personal bad experience with Planet Fitness. Traffic citation that was issued on the 22nd of June, about 11.38 in the evening, eastbound Webster at Crooks in the city of Royal Oak, and you were cited for disobeying a traffic control device. The yes, option sir. three, you can admit or deny responsibility, or you can admit responsibility with an explanation. How do you uh, proceed? I would like to deny, Your Honor. You could raise your right hands, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth? I do, Your Honor. I do, Your Honor. The, the officer will testify first. Yes, Your Honor. Um, on that date and time, approximately 11.38 p.m., um, me and another officer were driving southbound uh, on Crooks at Webster, um, and uh, that light at that time uh, starts flashing. So. Uh, to drive southbound and northbound on Crooks, it was flashing yellow. Um, to drive eastbound on Webster, it was flashing red. Um, so we, we were going through the intersection, and the defendant was driving his vehicle, the 2012 Ford Focus, black and color. Um, he did not stop at the red flashing light, um, and uh, it caused us to have to slam on our uh, brakes to avoid causing an accident. So the guy cuts off a cop, gets written gets written a ticket for it, and then has the temerity to, to fight it in court. Here we go. But he is a Planet Fitness member. Mr. Sotomayor? <laughs> yeah, so I was coming I was coming from my house, uh, going to the gym, the Planet Fitness on Crooks, 
And yeah, I, I came up to the light. It was a blinking red. So I know on a blinking red, I'm supposed to stop, which I did. Go came to a complete stop. I looked both ways to see if it was clear. But on Crooks, on that corner, there's a bunch of construction going on. And there's a huge brick wall that they were, I don't know, building or taking down, which limited my view. So I completely stopped and I creeped up a little bit. But by the time I creeped up to look to the left, I was already halfway through the through the intersection. So I went and the cop pulled me over. Where's the brick wall? Huh? Did you say huh? I, I can't. Uh, Did you just say huh? No, like I can't You're hear in you. Court. Behave accordingly. Okay. Sorry, Your Honor. Dodger. You said they were tearing down a brick wall. Where's the brick wall? Uh, my dad is waiting in the thing. He has pictures. We have evidence of it. I yeah. asked you where the brick wall was that you testified to. Judge has no patience for this Planet Fitness rabble in his courtroom. Um, it was in the property next to uh, the barber shop next to it. The barber shop sits back from the intersection about 150, 200 feet. Yes, the property next to it, Your Honor. I don't, I'm not sure if that property has a name or not, but there is a bunch of construction going on. And it limited my view completely. And uh, I ha my, ca my car is really small. It's a black Ford Focus. And um, with the view, because we, like, my dad's waiting to be in the thing, and he has evidence of it, too. Um, and we we have, like, printed out. Oh, don't worry. Dad shows up, and it doesn't help. Pictures of it. There's just, there's just no possible way an uh, officer would be able to see that I stopped completely until I was creeping up. To see the inter to see the intersection, Your Honor. You say your dad is here. Yeah, Edgar Sotomayor. I'm on my I'm on my parents' computer. He's at work right now. We'll bring him in. Doctor. Your Honor, if I may, um, in addition, uh, the defendant, uh, when we had pulled him over, had advised us that he was not aware that the flashing red meant stop. Oh, thank you. I didn't know it. We stopped. have his father here. I think Mr. The senior Mr. Sotomayor has sound has yet to connect. Doctor. Dad? The sound is not connected. Oh, Got the waving line, so he's yeah. keyed it to start. It just hasn't connected yet. Yeah. Do you want me to call him? Maybe? <laughs> just just general rule slip by. I don't know if it's I don't know if that's appropriate, but well. What we could do. There, he, his sound finally connected. Okay. okay. Mr. Sotomayor, were you in the vehicle that your son was driving when he got the ticket? I, I was not, sir. Okay, your son has indicated that you have some pictures. I, I do. And what do the pictures portray? It shows the, uh, uh, the, the if you don't consider it, but it shows how the big, the corner is blocked completely. So the anyone going down Crooks could not see if a vehicle stopped there or not. Yeah. And that, that, that's the that's the big brick wall that I was talking about, Your Honor. Can I see the picture again? I have it. So if you see closely, here's the big wall right here, sir. I have a, I have a I'm trying to orient myself to the picture. From so what direction are you taking the picture? Going down Crooks, and that's Webster coming across right here. Yeah, I was going down Webster, and that's the I asked your father a question. I didn't ask you a question. Okay, sorry, Your Honor. The brick wall, is. where is it in relationship to Webster? So here's the stoplight. Here's Crooks. And Webster is right here, sir. This is Webster going across. Here's the big wall that they put there. They're doing construction there, sir.
Dad's reasonable. He's trying. It, it doesn't help, but he's trying. And he, you know, he's he's a rational guy. Sure. So they, they had a big hole there. And so they built that to, to avoid anybody falling in there. So coming this way is Webster. Here's going Crooks. So the picture is looking southbound on Crooks, correct? Correct. And you can see that there's a street sign. Correct. And you can see the church. Correct. It's on the south side. Correct. And you can see the sidewalk that runs along Crooks on both sides of Webster. Correct. So his car is parked back here. He drives a little black Ford. No, wait. Pickup. You testified where his car was parked. No, not parked. I mean, at, at, at this picture, it is because he said the light. I took a picture of him going this way so you can see that his car is not visible at the light. Okay. And what? So, so you're saying that if he stopped back from the intersection, that the officer would not be able to see him? Correct. Hey, and here's another picture here from a distance that you can see. Here's that's the same thing from a distance if he's coming this way. What direction is this? Was that <laughs> picture looking in? Same, so. picture, same, same direction, just further back. And this is daylight, and that one was nighttime when I took it off. When okay. I took it. So in the photograph, looking south, you can see the curb. You can see the area next to the curb, and there is construction material. It's not on the road. So this is the corner, sir. So he is parked. He's, that is the, the sidewalk. He's behind the sidewalk. The sidewalk's going this way right now. All right. The picture makes it very clear that had he stopped where he was supposed to stop, and had he began to grow forward, he would have been able to see that there's oncoming traffic on southbound Crooks. I, I stopped where the, because you're supposed to stop before this, the sidewalk and cross, and that's where I did stop. And so I had I had to creep up basically to the point where like it was like in the middle of the thing. No, that is not true. You were not in the middle of the street. It's a, I mean, it's a if very. If you would have pulled out as far as the sidewalk, you would have vision well to the north. There are two responsibilities at a flashing red light. One is to stop, and the other is to stay stopped until such time as traffic is clear. The fact that a police car had to jam on the brake so that there wouldn't be a crash means that you did not wait to start again until such time as the traffic was clear. You can, that, when you are facing eastbound at the stop bar, your vision of southbound traffic is not obstructed. It, uh, sir, I'm, I, it, it is, sir. It, you have no, but you cannot testify, sir. You you oh. were not there. You don't know what happened. I understand, sir. But if I, if I put my vehicle there at the stoplight and look left, you cannot see a vehicle coming, sir. I, and you know, there's I, no testimony that the conditions then were the same as they were when your son got the ticket. That is the condition, sir. There's no testimony to that. You, your son is the person that got the ticket, sir. You, Correct. You are a witness to the degree that you have taken pictures that you say portrays this circumstances at the time when he got his ticket. But there is nothing that you've shown that would demonstrate that he couldn't see southbound traffic. That, and the fact that the crash was avoided speaks to the driver's ability, the, the police officer's ability to avoid a crash when somebody came out into oncoming traffic. That construction does not stop people eastbound from seeing north 
seeing to the north so they can see southbound traffic when they come out. There are four lanes of traffic, two each way there, two north, two south. One of them, one of them is blocks are going down south for the construction. Yeah. And, and like, and like this, sir, I mean, again, the argument said, the argument from the police officer said that he did not stop. That's, that's the whole thing that she cannot see his car stopped or not. She just saw that he's going across. The issue does not fall to that. As I said, there are two responsibilities at a stop sign or a flashing red light. One is to stop and the other is to stay stopped until such time as traffic is clear. What's absolutely clear here is that, now first of all, he also told the officer at the scene that he didn't know he had to stop at a flashing red, but be that as it may. He certainly knew he's not supposed to get in front of a moving car, and he did, and he's responsible for that. Fine and cost will be consistent with the schedule that is posted. I believe that this was written as a traffic control, so that's one hundred and thirty dollars. There any way we can change it to something yeah. behind the point, sir? No, your son has testified inconsistently with how he spoke at the scene. He did what he did. If this is his first ticket, the Secretary of State is going to let him take an online traffic safety class to avoid the points. He'll be notified by mail of that automatically. So that that's the way to get the points off, Your Honor? No, he didn't say that. Uh, Possible that the, the Secretary of State is going to give you a chance to take an online traffic safety class to stop the points from going on. It doesn't take the points off. It stops them from ever going on. So can, what does that mean exactly? It means what the word said. If you take the Secretary of State's online traffic safety class, yeah. that stops the points from going on your record. Okay. Before the Secretary of State assesses you the points, the Secretary of State automatically gives the driver with a good driving record who is cited for a civil infraction, three points or less, not including careless, the automatic chance to take a once-in-a-lifetime class to stop the points from going on the record. Good news is there was not a crash. Um, is there anything? Because I I'm going to college next year, and I'm already working two jobs as it is. So is my father, and I really like he's making or I'm having the opportunity to pay for my tuition half of it, and I'm already like trying to pay as much as I can with working these two jobs, and I need to pay for textbooks as well. Is there any possible way you could just like lower the ticket price or anything or just move it to something else like it mr just sotomayor talk. i'm going to show you the respect that you're entitled to you're entitled to the consequences for your conduct i'm yes, not sir. going to say that what you did doesn't matter it does what you did could have got yourself killed but for the driving skills of the police officer you would have been in a t-bone crash a T-bone between the wheels at 35 miles an hour can be a fate. The speed limit at that point drops from 35 to 30. So the officer was probably only going 30. Might not have been a fatal, but it sure would have been serious if there's a door in your kidney. So this, if you look at how thick the door is of your car, that's the only thing stopping you from a T-bone. Okay. It's, it, the fine is $130. It needs to be paid. You can pay it online. You can pay it via the mail, or you can drop by the courthouse and pay it at the counter. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. That's People versus Paul King, file 9195 of 23. Oh, yes, we have an update. I'm my man, Paul Kingma. You know Paul Kingma. He's the one who's always getting railroaded. Good afternoon, Mr. Kingma, and 
Uh, We've been following his saga. Once again, this is the uh, time for a final. He was the victim of somebody giving him Bailey's Irish cream instead of regular cream in his coffee. Conference and Ms. Henry, is there any plea offer? Uh, it would be an operating while intoxicated. You just missed the high beam. Okay, and Mr. Kane, is that? That's an understanding of the plea agreement as well. Mr. Kane, I would like to take advantage of that opportunity to enter a plea agreement. All right, so most importantly, Mr. Kane, is that correct? You want to change your plea to the lesser charge? Yes, sir. Okay, nobody's used any force or threats or made any promises about what I would do at sentencing to get you to plead guilty. He sure right? is. And uh, you haven't been threatened or forced or coerced in any way to get you to change your plea. And you also understand after today you're giving up any claim that your plea was the result of promises or threats that have not been disclosed. Do okay. you understand that by pleading guilty you're giving up any claim in the future that your plea was a result of threats or promises that have not been disclosed. Has Mr. Kane answered all of your questions to your satisfaction? Good to hear. And uh, I see you've gone over uh, your trial rights with Mr. Kane and uh, you signed these rights. Did you read them and understand them before you signed the form? So you understand that you're giving up all of these trial rights by pleading guilty, including the right to a jury trial. And is that what you wish to do? And is it of your own free will? Yes, sir. Okay. You also understand that by pleading guilty, you'll have a conviction for operating while intoxicated and that that carries a maximum penalty of up to 93 days in jail. Yes, sir. The complaint alleges that on February 24th, you were driving your car on Manor Lane in Garfield Township, Grand Traverse County, when this incident occurred. Is that true? Was there an accident or did you get pulled over for some reason or something else? Got pulled over. Okay. Do you recall why that was? Is that I didn't turn on my turn signal. Okay. And had you also been consuming alcohol prior to driving? There was a blood test it said a 0.193 is that consistent at least with your drinking behavior on that one occasion okay what i'm shocked shocked okay i guess i'm not shocked we can test the results all right so then uh would you also agree that due to the consumption of alcohol your ability to operate a motor vehicle was substantially affected Okay, then to the charge, the lesser charge of operating while intoxicated, how do you plead? I'll accept your plea, find it's voluntary, accurate, and understanding. We'll set this for a pre-sentence report, uh, substance assessment. And are there any issues as to bond at this time, Mr. King? There are, Your Honor. Mr. Uh, King was taken into custody or turned himself in. I don't know which. Turned, turned himself in um, after a um, positive test. He's got about 20 days worth of credit. We're requesting release on bond pending sentencing, and Mr. Kingman would submit to a, uh, a continuous alcohol monitor to assist the court in determining or ensuring that he's compliant with his conditions. Okay, and uh, Ms. Henry, what do you think of that? Um, if the court would agree with the CAM, I think that's at this point the best thing we can do. He was on twice a day before that, Your Honor. Okay. Well, uh, I think that that would be sufficient uh, for protection of the public. The uh, defendant did turn himself in. He's been locked up for a long time, and I'm sure you'd like to be out until your sentencing in this case. So uh, I will amend the bond. Uh, with, was it? Uh, well, we'll reinstate the bond amount. It was a 5,000 PR conditions, Your Honor. Okay. Same conditions, except you are to obtain a video? continuous alcohol monitor uh, prior to release. Is that they, they put them on at the jail, right? Put them at the jail. That may mean that you have to stay in jail. You have one more night. I don't know if they can put it on you tonight yet. Maybe your taste. 
if this if it's possible since he turned himself in if he could come back to the probation department to have that thing applied that wasn't that heroic he he uh went and got busted with a <laughs> He went and got busted for drinking while while he was doing uh, his testing, and then turned himself in. Like he didn't have a lot of a cho- lot of choice there. To him, and I'll go tonight and tomorrow. Okay, I guess I will. Uh, I'll release the defendant so long as you have a cam device set up within the next forty eight hours, and you test at least uh, twice a day. Uh, your normal AM and PM times uh, between now and that when you get the cam, okay? When's the sentencing date, Miss Odom? Uh, August 29th at 9 a.m. if that works, Mr. Kane, it's a Tuesday. Right now I'm in a jury trial in the Andrew Circuit Court that day. I don't I don't know. I hate to schedule this one. That one I'm not sure of. I also have a doctor's appointment that morning, which I'll have to deal with. Is there a different date we could use? Sure. How about 945 on August 31st? That should be just fine. I've got stuff here anyway, so that would be just fine. Okay, so we'll be back on that date and time, and uh, let's see. So, Mr. King was, I, I put a little card in his pocket that's got probation's number on okay. it. Call them between, well, call them tomorrow. When you get out, when you go to get the camp and talk to them about the, getting your, uh, your sentencing appointment. So. Okay. The biggest problem I have is uh, when people don't uh, call the probation office and get that appointment set up because uh, if you don't do that, then we assume you're not interested in probation and uh I'll be so doing that tomorrow morning. Okay, so. that's what I want to hear. Thank you. We're all set for today then. 945, Timmy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Holy wow. That's red. And Mr. Giegler, you can turn on your camera and microphone. Okay, this one is Natalie's fault. It's horrible. This guy out Karen's any Karen I've ever seen. I implore you, do not watch this. I think you have to go pour a cocktail. This is number 23-190. And Mr. Giegler, can, can you make sure and correct me if I'm saying your name wrong? Uh, you said Paul. It's Phil. Phil. Giegler. Yeah, Giegler. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Okay. Hands, please. And do you both swear that the testimony that you give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. All right, and Mr. Manel, you're you're the petitioner here. You get to go first. Go right ahead, sir. All right, thank you. Um, I don't have much more to add other than what I have added um, in the documents there. I have several uh, personal um, written statements stating that he has harassed me or harassed me through other people stating threats um, or wishes of threats or death upon me, um, along with two in-person interactions that I've added in there. is there anything else? I don't have anything other than what I have added in there, other than I'm concerned with the amount of energy spent towards the hatred towards me with no interaction from me and no prompting from me uh, and how it's escalating concerns me of what he's willing to do, um, especially when I have not acted upon or even responded to any of the things he's said. The last time I called the cops and I I didn't know what to do because I'm not in a position where I can handle any of that myself. And they told me to file an anti-harassment order, especially with there being multiple, multiple, multiple points of contact with me and employees that he's never even met. So. Right. Uh, A couple of just a couple of questions to make sure that I'm clear on on what you're telling me here, especially in your written material. Absolutely. 
Mr. Giegler is someone you used to work with? Yes, he's an ex-employee, yeah. Okay. And am I correct that both of you are, I, I guess, present in the uh, cannabis business? Uh, I am. Yeah, I don't know about him anymore. He was fired. Yeah. And one of the interactions that you describe here in your... In your Judge, he couldn't hack it in the cannabis business like me. Uh, written petition happened at one of the cannabis businesses here in Olympia, right? So correct. And it's not the it's not my place of work. I was actually going in as a patron. Um, both of them actually happened at different ones, funny enough, on either side of town. I was just going in to purchase. And okay. as soon as he saw me, he started to make comments in front of a room full of people. I mean, nasty comments. I hope you get cancer. I hope you die. You should go kill yourself. I even leaned over to the security guard who was working. This is the first interaction. This is months after he was fired from 420. Um, and I leaned over to the security guard and I said, uh, hey, you have. First of all, it's funny that he's. <laughs> I, I don't know. Giggler's like, you know, he smiled at, the, at this. I think he's just saying he's lying is, 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 is the idea. Um, and, and the other thing is getting f fired from 420 has got to be a low. A customer that's harassing me. Um, I didn't state who he was or, or our relationship. I just wanted to get my stuff and go. I, I have no ill will. It's I just don't want to be harassed and I don't want to fear for my family or anyone around me. I don't want them to have to deal with him hating me because he sees them in uniform and he goes up to them in in Safeway, which has happened. Everything's legal in Washington, apparently. Multiple times. So he's not only harassing me, but he's harassing other people about me. And I have the written statement from our previous manager even saying that he has seen Mr. Giggler out in public where he stated that if I talked with Mr. Manel, uh, he wanted me to tell him to go kill himself. So that is that is the. Is it bad that I, I couldn't even take this guy seriously because of the man bun? I mean, he was just out as far as I was concerned from, from the get manager of my store. I got you. Okay. Is there anything else uh, you feel I need to know before I hear Mr. Eagler's side of it? I don't think so. Just, just that I think he is potentially dangerous to himself or others. All right, Mr. Giegler, it's your turn to tell me your side of it. Uh, yeah, I actually didn't even receive this paperwork until Tuesday night last week. Um, it was not handed to me. It was stuffed into my vehicle. So I found it out that way. Um, so I had, according to the document, I couldn't get, a, I couldn't input any evidence because it was past the week time frame. Uh, not sure if that matters or anything like that. I was told it was five days before the court. Uh, Mr. Manel just. Sorry. Remember, Mr. Giegler gets to tell me his side of it. All right. Mm -hmm. But and that's what this hearing's for, Mr. Giegler. You can tell me your side of it. You don't you don't have to put anything in writing into the court file. That's something you can do, but it's not required. You can also testify about your side of it. And that, that's what you're here to do today. All right. Um, well, regarding the J Jeremy, Jamie, whatever his name was, Jeremy. The manager he was referring to that I said I met him outside of uh, work and said those things. I have never met this man outside of work. I He was my boss at one point, but I have never once met him outside of work. Have I met other employees that worked for 420 outside of work? Yeah, but I've never met this Jeremy character. Um, so to me, that's pretty much null and void for anything he has to say about that. Um, I've seen him twice, uh, Nick Manuel. Man now, whatever the hell his name is. Um, both Mr. at the Mr. Green Giggler, I want you to use some uh, appropriate court behavior. Okay, the la your language and behavior needs to be appropriate for court. Did I? What I do? Yeah, using curse words casually like that is just not appropriate for court. So uh, please, I, I apologize. Um, I met or I saw Nick twice both at Green Lady establishments. I refuse to shop at 420 because they work there. Um, I go out of my way not to see them because I don't want to see them. Um, 420 <clears throat> is, uh, I haven't looked in a while, but it was like of the four stores, 
they're in the top six. Green ladies are the other two. So I choose to go to the other two as they have better deals and I don't want to go to his place. He's getting way too specific about where he chooses to get his dope work at all. Um, the first encounter he described, uh, the security asked me to stop and I immediately stopped and I walked out the second time I had, or at least smarter than the other guy, which I think he is. I had <laughs> gone in, saw him in there, and walked out immediately, and then waited for him to come out so I could go in. I did not want to be around him. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, they spend a lot of time in the cannabis industry. You, you, you can't expect too much. <laughs> Also, the people that he got to write information about me were also all the people working against me to get me fired. Nick had tried to work against me since I had started that job to try to get me fired. I don't know if he was threatened by me just because people like me or what, but he was very... We need Judge Brian in here because you're, you're correct. That would be her take. That would be her take against me working there from this first week even um i was written up in a ret- i i actually showed up for five minutes on uh on judge bryant's prayer stream this morning and it, it was it was ab- absolutely cool palatory manner because i had asked another manager a question that he did not know the answer to and because of that i was written up for it he fraternized fraternized What's the word Fra- fraternized? <laughs> mm-hmm. If you don't, if you don't know the word, then choose one you do. Words to live by. I think that's Had the a word. Casual relationship with that's what that word means. Yes, um, with multiple members of management, I was put in a corner where I could not talk to pretty much anyone in management without the retaliatory factor from them. I don't wish to see him. I don't like him. I go out of my way to avoid him to begin with. It just so happens to be that he has four stores that he. Oh yes, Moon Baby. This is the world we live in now. This is what we. This is what we're up against. Could chop at from his business, but he chooses to go to another one, which is his prerogative. But pretty much the only thing, only time I would ever really run into him would be at those stores, and I already try to go at times that he does not. Because it seems to be that he always shows up around you know, like the 10 o'clock mark. I'm going to avoid that time because I don't want to see him. As for others saying I've said things to them, they've known that I did not like him. They're also people who have said multiple things against him, too. <laughs> they don't like him either half the time. But to me, that's just all hearsay. I, I mean, they can say I said things. I mean... I asked if they worked at 420 or if I knew they worked at 420. I just talked about how I did not want to work there anymore. I hope they get out soon because he's not a good manager. All right, Mr. Giggler, is there anything else you feel I need to know before I make a decision? No, nah, I think that's everything. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, now it's clear to me that you know these these two parties they they don't like each other there's clearly bad blood here and you know that's um sometimes the impetus that gets people into trouble when they follow through on feelings like that but i'll say this uh, yeah yes this is this is two extremely non-masculine guys in their feelings if they were normal guys there would have been a fist fight somewhere and it'd be over there might be charges on that. We don't understand it, or there might not be. <laughs> but this, behold, what you have with the feminization of women of men. It, enjoy. Um, as much as the you know the things that Mr. Giggler said, or that that Mr. Manel attributes to him having said, um, you know, they're not nice things for sure. I mean, it's they're unpleasant things, but I, I don't think any of them are um harassment 
not 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 legal harassment, not in the sense that the law defines harassment for purposes of either criminal conduct or for um, granting an anti-harassment order. It's it's basically what you might say in layman's terms is you know trash talk or you know talking bad about some around town. That kind of thing can happen. Uh, you know, if people don't like each other, they're free to say mean things about each other or you know, post disparaging things about each other on social media or tell mutual friends that the other person's a bad person or, you know, a scoundrel or whatever. But, you know, this that's a different thing than um, than harassment. And may, um, may I, I mean, interject? You, yeah. No, no, Mr. Minnell. Um, at sure. this point, I'm making a decision and I'm explaining it. Understandable. Um, or if I've made a decision, I'm explaining it. So. I did not grant a temporary order here, partly because, um, or I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, both of you, the the uh, the judge who heard the case didn't. I assume partly because there wasn't a emergency situation, but also because of some concern that this might not really rise to the level of harassment. This is a good example of why it's important to hear both sides of the story. So Mr. Giggler comes in and tells me his side of the story, and that gives some context to the whole thing and kind of give some context too to the the actual intention and meaning behind the statements that he made and he's been consistent and clear yeah he doesn't like mr Minnell and he says nasty things about him occasionally but i don't take anything from that that there's any serious intention to do any kind of harm it's just kind of unpleasant nasty stuff but you know this that's allowed under the law so uh, unfortunately you know mr Minnell, i'm going to deny your petition um and I'll let you know just because, you know, things are fluid and change over time. And, you you know, this might, you know, next week, next month, bad things might happen that are totally different. And if there's any kind of escalation, if there's any kind of thing. Things are fluid indeed. Things that constitute threats to your safety. One, feel free to call 911 if that happens. And two, uh, you can come back with another petition if things change but based on the record here in front look at look at this guy's pensive look he's doing he's doing this with the head nod oh oh it's so awkward it's so awkward today uh, i'm going to deny the order <laughs> i do have a question please if stop. i have proof or can get proof that his statements are false um and that he did in fact wait for me or he did in fact continue saying things or he did in fact tell me he wanted me to kill myself or spit on my car, which I have in my things, which are physical, you know, if I have things that are saying that he, his statements are false, can I enter those into court or will I have to enter? He's not your attorney. Uh, it's not time for questions. He's issued a ruling. <sighs> there a whole new petition. Now that, that would be potentially a new thing. You, you can't introduce evidence that, says Afterward. that what Mr. Giggler told me here today is right. false. I've already evaluated. You are so bad in court that you lost to Mr. Giggler, who didn't have notice of the hearing. He's he's bad. He's here. You're you're down there. <laughs> that that's how this broke down here. We have a first amendment and you failed to meet your burden. Next. What he said and Fair I enough. determined no. the I just if I can get cameras. Him. If I can get camera footage, is all. Yeah, no, this, yeah, this case, this particular petition is is closed. There's a final decision on it now. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> is there anything else you would need from me, Your Honor? Uh, nope. I just want to let you both know that this order uh, denying the petition will be filed with the uh, clerk, and you can both you'll both get a copy of it from the clerk or you can get it from the clerk's office whenever you'd like. Do they, you. do they email it to you? And do you have my email? They'll, um, we can take your email and send it to you. Yeah, that'd be great, actually. Okay. Uh, you ready? Yeah. Heck, it's a double rainbow. Hey, Cal, look at that. It's a double rainbow. I told you. <laughs> I told you. But I, ha I have to admit, I, you know... It's it's better with a cat telling you. It, it is. <laughs> Giggler prevails. Giggler prevails. He gets service by via having this the stuff stuffed into his car door 
<laughs> it's a 420 showdown, you know, like everybody's high. He gets it. They both, they both, to their credit, make it to the hearing. <laughs> Giggler fails miserably, but the other guy fails worse. <laughs> it was a race to the bottom. It was a race to the bottom. There you have it. All right. Thank you all for coming out. So much. <laughs> it's a 420 showdown. It really was. <laughs> Oh, that, it was it was just epic, epic bad, you know. Any way you slice it. <laughs> oh, so much good stuff in there. We we had uh, we had our guy getting railroaded. At least that's what I'll claim. Even though he entered a plea, good for him. He finally took care of it. He got busted out. He got busted out of the Grand Traverse County Jail. So he can go drink some Baileys and get thrown back in here in the next 48 hours, probably. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting up there. Might 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 go see the dad. I might I might have to I might have to slide by the uh, courthouse in, in Trevor City. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Thank you all for coming out. That that was a fun one. And sorry, sorry about the dog case early, but I thought it was interesting. I feel bad, but a bunch of people, a bunch of people got sad from that one. All right, I will see you all soon.